If some of the pictures on your baseball cards look a bit off, there might be a good reason as to why. The 1959 Topps baseball set is a 572 card release, showcasing 16 franchises between the National and American Leagues. Mel Roach's hat looks bright for game time. Willie May's cap fits just right. Bill Hall's jersey looks fresh and pressed. However, certain players in this set are shown as members of a team for which they had yet to play. Some were traded or called up from the minors so late in the 1958 season, there was no time to get a picture in their new uniforms. So how did Topps work around such issues, with traded sets still 20 plus years away? The answer is airbrushing. Some pictures are done in an acceptable manner, but in others you can tell something has been altered. After not playing in 1957 for the Tigers, Herb Moford was traded from Detroit to Boston in December of 1958. He would appear in just 11 games between 1959 and 1962, posting an 0-3 record. Here, his headshot is cropped so close that you can't tell he might be wearing a Tigers jersey. Notice the difference in the cap's color surrounding the brush logo. Bill Fisher managed to make stops in Chicago, Detroit, and Washington between June and September of 1958. It's not evident why he wasn't photographed in a Senator's jersey for his 59 card, but here you can again see a brushed spot and poorly drawn W. After a short run with the Phillies in 58, where he collected five home runs and five doubles in 39 games, Chuck Esagian was traded to St. Louis in December. It looks like the entire face of his cap was airbrushed to make room for a very large Cardinals logo. The pinstripes on his Phillies jersey were also removed. George Crow was part of a six-player deal between the Reds and Cardinals just days after the 58 season concluded. Another very close shot and large logo is an indicator that this picture is not the original. Plus, the STL doesn't seem to conform with the shape of his cap. Pete Burnside was purchased from the Giants the same week as George Crow's transaction. He stayed with the Tigers for two years, but didn't appear in more than 44 games in any of his eight seasons in the majors. Here's a better shot to determine the color difference where the Caps' new logo appears. In February 1959, Bob Miller was sent to the Cardinals from Philadelphia in a conditional deal, but was returned in April, not playing for St. Louis and never appearing in a major league game again. Notice the Phillies pinstripes on his jersey. The card's back confirms his final demotion. After not appearing in the majors in 1957, Solly Drake was purchased from the Cubs by the Dodgers in February of 1958 and sent to their AAA affiliate in Montreal. He spent the entire season there. His debut for LA would be the following year, playing nine games before another move to Philadelphia. Here the entire cap looks to be phony, but at least they kept the Montreal uniform. A four-player trade between the A's and Yankees in June of 1958 gave Virgil Trucks the final stop in his baseball journey. Seems there was a lot of time to grab a pick in his pinstripes, but look at how narrow the NY is in order to fit it on his cap's front. The card back updates his latest move. The first of many moves for Gino Simoli saw the outfielder traded from the newly named Los Angeles Dodgers to the Cardinals in December of 1958. This might be the easiest picture to notice a discrepancy due to his Dodgers jersey in full view. Each time he was sent to the minors, Rocky Nelson dominated the pitching. After two seasons in Toronto of the International League, he was drafted by Pittsburgh in December of 1958 under the Rule 5 draft. A heavily brushed cap matches his somewhat clean, or shall we call it generic, jersey. After appearing in just two games for the Yankees in 1956, Jim Coates spent the next two years in the minors, eventually returning to post a 6-1 mark in 1959. He would be a key component to the club's pennant the following season. They did a better job with cropping the Caps logo, but the picture has an overall painted look. Solly Hemus was traded in September of 1958, leaving Philadelphia to return to his original team, the Cardinals. He would be released twice by St. Louis between October of 58 and June of 59, never to appear as a player again. Topps tried to fool us with a variety of shading and gradient techniques, but I think we're on to them by now. 
Though he jumped around six minor leagues over the course of 12 seasons, Jim Baxas played in the majors for just one season, hitting 246 between Los Angeles and Cleveland. Not only does the cap show not seem to fit his head, but by the time this series was released, he was already on his way to Ohio. Scan the cards in your collection for alterations in the pre-Photoshop era, and I'll keep posting the modifications from mine, each set at a time.